Hey everyone, so I'm sure a lot of you know the popular streamer The Bouts. If you don't know him, he's a challenger player that is known for playing a lot of Scion and having negative KDAs almost every game, but still climbs to challenger consistently. He feeds or comes close to feeding in almost every game. So how does he win? How is it possible that he climbs while just straight running it half the time? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at two games, one where the Baus is playing Scion and one where he's playing Cho'Gath. In both replays, he does the same exact things, meaning that what we're going to teach here is not champion specific. You can do this on almost any top laner. So let's jump into some gameplay. In this first game, he's on Scion versus Shen. Before laning starts, he's standing in top tribrush, which is where top laners are supposed to stand, so the top jungle entrance is covered. Sadly for him, they invade as five, and he might have been tabbed out or looking at his stream. Either way, his first death happens here. He's going to be pushing from level one and is trading pretty much evenly with the Shen who got first blood, and they both hit level two. As the third wave arrives, the Bouse's ward that he placed in Scion passive at the start runs out, and the enemy Echo does a full clear blue side into level 3 gank top. Shen and Echo both flash though, so he dies for the second time here. Now there are two things to understand before we go further. First, he 100% has to TP back to lane now because his wave is frozen in front of Shen's tower. If he doesn't, he will fall way too far behind and won't be able to lane anymore. Secondly, Echo doing a full clear blue side into ganking top does have trade-offs for him. The Baus's jungler is Viego, who has now finished his red buff and is level 3 as well, and the scuttle is spawning. Viego can easily get both scuttles because of the gank that Echo did, as he should recall and go do his red, depending on what he knows about Viego's clear. Viego could have went across and taken Echo's red, and this would create a split map or vertical jungling situation, where Echo does topside blue and red, and Viego does botside blue then red. But let's get back to the gameplay now. The Baus is going to TP back to lane, but in a safe spot back here. Then he immediately runs to the brush in river to see if Echo is there. He knows if Echo does actually end up being there, he can run to his Viego in the river. This is better than walking up to the waves and getting ganked much further away from his jungler. The Echo does end up waiting in the brush for a regank, and he's forced to jump the wall to safety as Viego takes the scuttle. Now, Echo is in a really bad spot as he's guaranteed to not get a scuttle, and Viego could potentially invade his red buff if he had Pryo in mid and bot, but we're not going to focus on that too much. Just understand that Echo using his time to gank top with only blue buff had its trade-offs. Let's focus back on the Baus for now though, as he continues to hard push waves in top lane before he's forced to recall and spend gold and refill potions. When he gets back to lane, he clears a big wave and starts hard pushing yet again. He ends up getting solo killed by Shen though, and uses Scion passive to clear as many minions as possible. As he's heading back to lane, he notices Shen freeze the wave and walk into the brush, meaning Shen is just going to recall here and come back to collect the big wave. This is a very common recall to go for when you have the wave frozen. So the Baus uses Scion ult to quickly get to the wave and clear all the minions as Shen is on the way back. He knows that Shen doesn't have TP to get back to lane quickly. Now Shen is bleeding CS by the second and the Baus is working on tower plates. He gets two plates, then goes to clear the incoming cannon wave. If Shen tries to fight him, he will just kite Shen away from all the minions dying on the tower. But alas, Echo is here, and the Baus knows he has no way to live this, so he focuses on clearing the wave and gets a lot of damage on Shen too with Scion passive. He actually almost kills the Shen somehow. Either way, there are two important things to understand here. First, by clearing the wave right before or after he dies, he makes it so that he doesn't lose any CS while he's dead. Yes, he gives gold to someone on the enemy team, but he's not actually falling behind himself. The second thing is, getting all that damage on Shen is huge. Now Shen has to be very hesitant to use his ult on someone, as he could just die the moment he's done teleporting. Also, this makes it so that Shen should have to recall pretty soon, or the Baus can kill him when he gets back to lane. Also, we're going to go into much more detail on what the Baus is doing in a little bit. But getting back to the gameplay, the Baus gets back to lane after Shen shoves the wave, but like I said earlier, Shen had to recall after. So the Baus got the wave pushed in and got another tower plate. He goes back to do the same thing as before, clearing the wave in between towers, and while he's doing that, the enemy Silas takes TF alt and teleports in, so the Baus flashes over the wall to safety. 
As he leaves, he uses the vision plant to see Silas and burst him over the wall to get a nice and free kill. Then his team comes up to top lane and four man ganks the Shen, leading to the Baus getting another tower plate. He clears the wave in between the towers yet again, and because they saw him doing this, Chen TPs in behind and finds the Baus greedily trying to take the enemy Echo's wolves. Chen flashes and gets the shutdown kill though, and they get Viego as well. What is the Baus going to do? Well, he's going to TP back to lane while Shen recalls and go for that last tower plate. After getting it, he goes to clear the wave and is ganked again, and that's going to be his sixth death. All right. So what has he been doing and why does it work? Well, it's actually two concepts in action that players even in Challenger don't understand fully yet, and that's pressure and tempo. The Baus understands exactly how important pressure is. It's pretty much the most important thing in the game at any rank. Pressure makes the enemy team have to make decisions. The easy way to think about this is split pushing. If you're split pushing later on in the game, the enemy team has to decide either to come stop you or to start a fight. On top of that, they need to decide who is going to come stop you, and this leads to multiple people starting and stopping their recalls. You guys know exactly what we're talking about. But anyway, the Baus isn't just dying over and over. He pulls a ton of pressure to his lane, which would make the enemy laner win lane, which means that they should be pushing, right? Well, that's where Tempo comes in. Remember the time that he almost killed Shen under tower with Scion passive after clearing the wave? That gave him lane tempo. Meaning when he gets back, Shen will have to take a recall, giving the Baus control of the lane, and he's allowed to push and take plates as Shen comes back to lane. The other time the Baus made a really smart play around tempo was when Shen froze the wave and went to recall. So the Baus ulted into lane, cleared the wave, took two plates, and denied Shen a ton of minions. So far in this game that we're looking at, the Baus is 2 and 6 while Shen is 4 and 1, but he has 6.3k gold and Shen has 5.1k. Now, the enemy team used a lot of their time ganking top, but you have to take into account opportunity cost. For example, Echo ganked top at level 3, but he lost Scuttle for it and falls behind the Viego. But he got his Shen a kill, right? That made Shen 2 0 along with the first blood in Tribrush before minion spawn. Then Shen solo killed the Baus, so he was 3 and 0. The enemy team kept coming though, putting all these resources and time into top lane, but Scion's tower is full health and he has more gold, so he's stronger than the enemy top. That's pretty insane, isn't it? I know you might be thinking though that this only works on Scion. Being able to ult back to lane or clear minions after he dies are definitely advantageous parts of this strategy. But that's why we have this second game to look at where he's playing Cho'Gath. He doesn't have Scion passive to kill minions when he dies, so let's see what happens. In this game, he's playing Cho versus Aurelia, and before laning starts, the same exact thing happens. The enemy team invades as 5 through Tribrush, but this time the Baus is late to lane, so he luckily walks into the jungle at a good time and can escape them. He egos on them a bit though, and Aurelia uses Flash to try and land a stun, so he's forced to Flash as well. Then in laning... Yep, you guessed it. The enemy jungler is here nice and early ganking him as he's still level 1. He doesn't really have a way to outplay this gank since Aurelia is level 2 and he's slowed by red buff. He's going to TP back to lane and collect the huge wave, but then we have something important to point out. The Baus still has the fundamentals of top lane down as well. He knows Aurelia has TP, so he can't just hard shove this wave. He needs to slowly push to stack up a big wave which is one of the most important parts of playing top. While he's doing that though, he notices the Aurelia TP bot lane instead, so he hard shoves the wave and goes to take his first recall, but decides that he wants one more wave first. One more wave is a famous set of last words for many top landers though. And yeah, as he goes to clear the last few minions, he gets ganked by Nidalee and the enemy support. But because he cleared basically the entire wave before dying, he makes it back without losing too much. In fact, he's actually slightly ahead of Aurelia in experience. So, like we talked about before, tempo. Aurelia had to reset, which gave the Baus time to get back to lane and shove the next wave as Aurelia was on the way back. He gets the tower plate and then does the proxy that you'll often see Singe do and farms the next wave in between the tower. If Aurelia goes for him, he would just kite her away from the minions and she would lose a lot of CS while the Baus would clear most of the wave anyways. 
She knows that she can't chase him, so she just goes for the wave. Then he stays in the enemy jungle and waits for the next wave to clear it just like before. But Aurelia flashes over the wall with her alt, so the Baus flashes over as well to escape. The enemy support was also here yet again. Do you kind of see how this game is pretty much the same exact thing as the last one? The Baus gets ganked a ton, but uses tempo to get the wave pushed quickly and starts hard pressuring top lane by farming waves in between towers. His pressure makes the enemy team want to kill him, but he survives this one and gets Aurelia's flash and ult. Then watch what happens, the same thing. He recalls before Aurelia and comes back to lane before him because she had to recall after pushing the wave. Boom, tempo advantage for the Baus. Time to shove the wave, but this time he takes top scuttle since his jungler is bot side. Now the situation is going to be reversed for a few waves, with Aurelia being the one to clear the waves before the Baus. So how does he get his tempo back? Well, he recalls when they both have a bunch of gold to spend and instead of walking back to lane, he TPs even though he already walked this far. If Aurelia wants tempo back in lane, she has to TP back as well. Aurelia wasn't willing to TP back, so the Baus gets a tower plate and almost baits Aurelia into a gank. But after that, he pushes again and the bait for the gank works out this time, getting him a kill. He does the same things for the next few minutes and takes the tower while his tower still has 60% of its health. At this point in the game, even though he got ganked multiple times early on because of his awareness of and smart use of tempo, he has 6.7k gold and Aurelia has 6.4k. Also he's halfway to level 12 and Aurelia is halfway to level 11, so he's a full level ahead which is huge. Level advantages are extremely important more important than gold advantages in most cases. So obviously this isn't the only thing the Baus does to win games, but it's the first and most important part. These are the main concepts in his playstyle, but we can't cover everything he does in one video. But you should now have a much better understanding of tempo and pressure and how to use them to get leads without even killing the enemy laner. All right, guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So we offer a five division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Anyway, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it, and as always, thanks for watching.